Hello and welcome to the Liverpool Way podcast. The Reds have dumped Arsenal out the FA Cup after a weird game at the Emirates in which Arsenal squandered a boatload of first half chances and then paid the price late on when Klopp's mentality monsters bagged another couple of late goals. I'm Dave Usher, editor at liverpoolway.co.uk and to discuss this one with me are Paul Natton and Julian Richards. All right, Paul, start with you. Um, kind of feels like we stole one there. Would you agree with that? Um, well, certainly, I think if you look at the first yeah. 75 minutes of the game, definitely. <laughs> I, mean, I just think hell. it's hilarious, you know. That the... a bri- I know. Uh, do you know what? Do you know when John? Do you know when John, John called it in the chat, didn't he? And I went straight away. Yeah, I was thinking it, but I didn't want to say. I it said it to me, Dad. Grab. I said it's, it's <laughs> uh, but like. Yeah, there was no doubt. I knew at half time we were winning the game. To get well, through that first half at nil nil, that's a yellow win. I wouldn't go as far as to say I knew, but like I'm watching it thinking these have missed so many chances and they've been nowhere really near scoring. Even some of the goal line ones, it's not like Allison pulling off loads of saves. They're just not really hitting the target or they're not well, getting as far as the goal. Did Allison make a save blocks. other than like the relatively sure. straightforward one from Havertz on the edge of the box? I can't remember Allison even <clears> having <throat> to make many saves. He tipped there was one, one over the bar, backwards and had to tip it over, wasn't it? And Saka yeah. just totally asked the, the, the rebound. But I mean, I, I, yeah, up to, up to about 75 minutes, it, it looked like we, you know, you could say we stole it, like, but I don't, we didn't steal it there. You know, I think the changes were so significant in the second half. I, I can't really explain from our perspective why we were so pathetic in the first half. Mm. What I would say is, and I think it is worth giving Arsenal a bit of credit, is that I think they pressed us probably better than anyone I've seen this season in that first half. They were just super, super intense. Um, they were all over us, very front foot. I think they certainly sniffed blood with no Virgil mm. because if you think about how teams normally press us, um, they just stand off Virgil. He's, he's almost unpressable, isn't he? Mm. Um, but I, I think they were right at us every second. It felt like we just couldn't, couldn't get on the ball at all. And when we did, everything was hurried. Um, but I, I saw the first half as probably 60-40 about what Arsenal did rather than what we didn't. I mean, we weren't great, I have to say, but I just think when Arsenal are pressing so intensely, um, I, I wasn't really losing my shit about it. Um, but I then think second half, you know, the changes the clock made, first of all, just in terms of where he lined the players up, you know, they came off for the second half, just flipping Harvey and Gakpo around for a start meant we just got a bit more control in midfield. Yeah, and then I think well, Jota, Darwin going to the left as well. Darwin going to the left. Part Jota that. coming on. I mean, Jota was instrumental, really. I think in the final twenty, yeah. in the final fifteen minutes or twenty minutes with the extra five added on or whatever it was. Um, and I, and I think my big takeaway from that today is um, I don't really want to use the same phrase because I think it's a bit cliched in terms of mentality monsters. But there is something going on with the mentality of this squad, this this current squad. You know, it's not. It's, it's, it's not coincidence now that they've come from behind so many times or they've scored so many late goals. Obviously, we didn't Did come you see the graphic when, when they put the graphic up on the late goals? Yeah. It was nil nil at that point. <laughs> we yeah, were like way yeah. ahead of everyone else yeah. on the yeah, late goals and then, and then we just amazing. went and scored another two. And, and the one about it, the other, the other one about scoring first in all competitions. Yeah. Uh, when we, so, sorry, but yeah, when we go ahead in all competitions, 22 yeah. games where we've gone ahead. Won to any of them, drawn to, lost none. Add, a, add an um, extra one to that now as well. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, so, you know, it, it, I mean, yeah, it, 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 to be euphoric about the performance, I think it's difficult after what we saw in the first half, but to be euphoric about the results is right. Mm. <laughs> Fucking brilliant to put one over on Arsenal. Because I tell you what, boys, they're getting back to the whole, at the wrong time, I think, smelling themselves thing again. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm, I'm not down with that at all. Um, you know, there's too many. Th- there's just, I mean, all this, all this. There's little bits of shit online which I'm not happy about. All the stuff about Curtis and all that. I mean, fuck off. But, <laughs> we'll address you know, the, that later because that, yeah, that's the, the, the fucking the shit about Saka and my star boy and all that Ugh. bullshit. Um, 
So it was just really nice to put them in their place because that because they were bouncing first half and then they've <laughs> nice to hear them booing at the end. Like mm. um, they, uh, they 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 know's the better team. Um, and and also as well, I mean, great to go through to the next round. Fucking really good that we're not dealing with a replay. Um, but also nice to have that one over on them before we go into the big league game, which yeah. is coming up against them in what three or four weeks' time. Mm. So yeah, really pleased, really pleased. Jules, you know me and you, how we feel about Arsenal. So pretty satisfying. Always satisfying seeing Arsenal th- throw up on themselves. Yeah, um, <laughs> they desperately need they desperately need a striker. They uh, you can't oh, have that yeah. many chances at home. Uh, I feel I felt a little bit. A bit like you two, um, probably more so than Paul, but less so than you, Dave, the halftime, that if we got to halftime and it was nil-nil, I felt that we'd make the necessary changes, Klopp would get hold of them, and Arsenal's chance might have gone. I thought they might still have, have nicked one off a set piece. Yeah. But um, wh- where is Paul saying they sort of returned to smell themselves? I don't think it's that. I f- th- there was some very Wenger-esque, can we thread this through the Ivor Needle mm. passing around the penalty area from them today. So they they seemed that seemed to be more of a reversion to that. Lots of attacking mids, but not a lot of att- uh, strikers. And just getting them getting themselves bogged down in the first half of i i felt there was too much uh we, we were being a bit too cute playing out for the back a bit lackadaisical i know trent said that in his post match interview that we made some of our own problems in the first half and i do think that we encouraged them we didn't take any pressure off by by being a bit sloppy playing out from the back um but overall i think Thoroughly enjoy beating Arsenal. It yeah. never, it never gets old, uh, especially, it, especially in in the cup competition that they're out, um, and especially that that sort of game. I thought second half it was we we were much better than 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 our first half showing, and we were better than Arsenal. I think balance of play, like I'm not opposed. To, in fact, I I quite revel in it being a smash and grab, and <laughs> absolutely no problem calling it a smash and grab. But I do think it sort of does a slight, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a slight disservice to our second half performance because yeah. we were very good in the second half. However, I'm torn because I also quite like a smashing grab, so I'm, <laughs> I'm not really sure how to frame it. But um, certainly, if you're Arsenal, you'd view that as a smashing grab because you had so many chances in the first half to beat to score. Um, then you've scored an own goal to put us ahead, and then you've been done on the break. In, in deep into stoppage time to, to finally conf- have the game confirmed that, that, that it's a it's a loss. So I can see why Arsenal would uh, 100% feel that's a smash and grab. But, uh, you know, from our point of view, it depends how much you just like, <laughs> you like the idea of a smash and grab because we were a lot better in the second half. Um, I think, you know, after the Newcastle game, I was talking about the way the pecking order would be now after more. I, I think... I think the lineup has to be as as much as possible. Nunez on the on the left, Diaz on the right, which is a shout you made, Dave. To be yeah. fair, and Jota through the middle. Yeah. Fitness be- permitting, I think. I just think, no knock on Gakpo. I just think it, it looked a lot more cohesive second half, especially with Diaz on the right. Um, and Jota looked like electric when he came <laughs> Jota on. Jota was fucking boss, wasn't he? Superb. He was. I, he, you know, we, we all, again, I, we say it all the time, we make the jokes about sometimes when he doesn't look like he knows how yeah. to play football. Well, he definitely knew, looked like he knew how to play football the day. He was, was fantastic. I also, Trent, I thought was good second half. I thought Curtis was, um, what was the standout performer in midfield attack in the first half, to be honest. I thought he tried his best and when he did get the ball, mm. he looked lively uh, he he got he had that um, that bit in the first half where he sort of robbed uh, sorry second half where he robbed White and uh, let, did that lead to the goal? Did that lead to the goal? Uh, was it that one or was it further well, did out? It? It, did it lead oh, it to the goal? Been, yeah. I can't. What do you mean it because leads it was on that touch. It was half. on that. When was it scored? first half? Yeah. Oh, it was it first no, half? Okay, t- yeah. Kansas had gone off what? by the time we scored. What the fuck are you? Yeah, it first. I thought it was. Yeah, was it was first half. Yeah, it was first half, was it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was first half. Yeah, because it was late on and Curtis obviously got subbed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, he? absolutely made a mug <laughs> of Ben Shite. 
this is this is what happens when you do when you when you do uh, you talk about it immediately after without seeing any. any I know, but you're out by about any. like sixty five minutes. It's not. It's all part of the Do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? It's the it's the camera angle. I'm remembering it from. I'm thinking we were yeah, attacking me too. that way. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. But I've got I've got it wrong. But I thought Curtis had a good game as well. Um, uh, I thought McAllister was a little bit off the pace, uh, and I didn't really get the put Harvey on the. I would I get putting Harvey in the right, but not if you're going to put Gakpo in midfield. That didn't make a lot of yeah. sense, and I thought that was possibly yeah, why we had so little control. It was like trying to ch- trying to grab a bar of soap in the in in water in the first half. We just couldn't get a grasp on anything. But ultimately, anything that uh, upsets Arsenal, uh, I'm here for always. Yeah. Yeah, at the the first half, you know, they could have easily have scored four or five. The second half, I thought, was pretty much even. Like, they still had some really good chances in the second half, but I was just laughing in the second half. I knew they were not going to score. <laughs> the only time, like, there was any concern was, was set pieces. I didn't think they were going to score in, in open play because they were overplaying it too much, taking too long to get the shots away. And the more they did that, the worse it got. It was like the, there was a whole team finishing like Darwin. You know when they're just like overthinking it with, with like with good chances, and the, the, but that's the run that they're in at the moment. They, they were the same against West Ham. I watched that game uh, against yeah, Fulham. They just deserve to lose Fulham up with a better side. But yeah. that is like a big problem for Arsenal at the moment. Is like just they're not taking chances and they're overplaying in good areas. But I'd say like in that first half, probably seventy five percent of what they did was just us fucking handing it to them. And like yeah, I mm. give them credit for for pressing us. But we've got to be smart. We were very than that. intense, Dave. Very, they very were, intense. They were, but like we, we knew that was happening. So why did we not just like adapt and and just like play it long? And then even if Darwin if Darwin's not getting it, let let let's just, like it gets us up the pitch, and then we can play for like the second balls and try to win it there. There's I like, mean, Virgil's normally the man for that. That's, isn't he? I said that to my dad. I was it. like, we're, we're missing Virgil, but it's not defensively how why we're missing him. It's purely just about Stretching like it. yeah. Organizing the team and making sure that diagonal. this doesn't happen. Yeah, it'll yeah. just ping a diagonal and and it gets us out. No one's doing that. It's like things in this world that make me like extremely nervous. So Darwin running through for a one v one, a three foot <laughs> a three foot birdie pot, going the dentist and Allison standing in the penalty area with his foot on the ball. I'm like, oh shit, no. And, and this is not, it's not about Alisson himself and like him giving the ball away. It's not that. It's more the general mindset that I can see of what, what we're doing when we start like just fucking about at the at the back, playing ourselves into trouble. And Arsenal knew what they were doing because like they, they let Alisson have it. And then when he played it out, someone then went and stood to block off the pass back to Alisson. And, and then we were like, oh, now what are we doing? And then it goes into McAllister. He gets caught on the ball or we play it down the line and someone gets in front. They did it really well. I'm not taking anything away from, from Arsenal's press, but I, I felt like we were just playing into the hands far too often. And Trent said that like in his, his post-match as well, about like the first half, like you know, most of our problems were self-inflicted from just giving the ball mm. away like that. We didn't do it anywhere near as much in the second half. Um the shape control, of the team right? probably helped with that. You know, the, yeah. like the changes that we made Midfield. probably helped. Do you know what? Quite, yeah. I, I quite. Um, just talking about set pieces. I mean, a couple of things on that really from Arsenal. I mean, clearly, I thought they were a threat on set pieces. Ironic that uh, they um, they defending a set piece gave us an own goal. Mm. But also, I I thought we were that that um, that long throw they were that loop and oh throw that they were doing down to the byline. We were so slow to adapt to that. He still did it in the second half, Paul. I know. It was a different player. I know, it's it, mad. it wasn't because it was Odegaard in the first half, wasn't it? Well, they'd done the exact same thing with Havertz just, in the I second. I mean, did they do it five, six times yeah, in the game? I mean, what, what we, we just doing? seemed incapable of adjusting. Yeah, it, that was mad. I mean, they did it twice in like fucking thirty seconds, didn't he? Uh, the, That's right. The second one first was half. Curtis just not paying attention to it at all, just let it go over his head. But yeah, they. Um, I do think they're clever with the set pieces. We said that after we played them at Anfield, you know, that that like weird thing that they were doing with like four players offside and then they all ran back and just kind of bumped into our players. And it just confuses everything. No one's getting like a free run at the ball. And they were doing that on every like, you know, free kicks that they had out wide. They were doing that all the time. But we dealt with it a lot better today than, than we did in the Anfield game. I think um, obviously we're prepared for that a bit better. And we did. We defended the set pieces really, really well. But you always felt like, oh, they they might do something here because that was the probably like the biggest threat, along with us just giving them the ball and letting them do stuff. But I think um, 
I said before, didn't I? Alisson's not really had to make many saves because Arsenal's finishing was just so bad. So many chances. I was just laughing my head off. Like, what did he do? Saka was the worst culprit, you reckon? The one, no, no, no. Bad can't, as well. be, can't be Saka. He's better than Salah, remember? Let's, let's not forget yeah. that. They were both Star horrendous, boy. weren't they? Yes. Havertz and Saka you, were horrendous. Was, sorry, I, where's that star boy thing come from? That's Arsenal fans. That's what they call them. You see it all over Twitter. That's my star boy. Really? And like my star boy, Arrow, Salah. And just all, all of that shit. Yeah. It, star it, boy? It, it's horrible. It just what are they in primary fucking, school? It, it makes me fucking vomit every fucking time I see it. Fucking gold star for Saka. What's just going the, on? It's just the most Arsenal fan Weirdos. thing ever. Like, yuck. It's still better than I all did... the Curtis Jones shit, which is doing my fucking head in the cheeky bastards. Uh, that, it's laughable. I think William Hazel will just address that now. Like the, I don't know where that came from. I think it was just some dickhead Arsenal fan account. He was just looking for... Um, you know, like worked. clout or whatever it is, what they call it. Well, yeah, it has worked because like, loads of people... But that that always happens. It's like everyone's looking for clicks, aren't they? So like every like website will pick it up, or or like other Twitter accounts then start retweeting it, and then before you know it, it's an actual like full on rumor that people are talking about as though it's a possibility. And it, 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 I don't even know <laughs> where it so comes from. Stupid. I, I, why? Where's the link come from? Is it because there was rumors that like when he was a kid, he, he he'd tell people he was an Arsenal fan. You know, like that's he, what somebody the, said. The, he said that he was when he was younger. He, he said he was an Arsenal fan. The thing that's done my head in about it, it is so self-evidently shite that uh, they're all they've all doubled down on it. The fucking arrogant fucking pricks. Social As media if, at Arsenal is just it, the worst. It's so fucking laughably wrong, and yet they're all absolutely insistent that Curtis is signing signing for Arsenal during this window. It, it's like hey. I started off being amused, and then I just got. Fuming. It's like us starting a rumor. I might start a rumor that that like we're we're in for Phil Foden and Phil Foden's like a boy or Liverpool fan and see if it gets any legs because it's like this is there's actually there's more credibility because we're better than Arsenal but the the point stands. Yeah. I've got an ex Liverpool midfielder that um, that Arsenal could sign in this window if they need to, oh, looking for yeah. a move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if they want, if they want one. <laughs> If they want a, if they want a, a, an older head there in midfield, I know of one that's that's looking for a move, and he 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 would be quite desperate to get back. What a team! Um, yeah, That'd be peak um, that wouldn't it? Fucking hell! No, peak Endo would be going to Newcastle. Well, uh, Newcastle, Newcastle needs some Jesus. players, and like they, they were talking about Saudis. loaning some players from Saudi. So yeah. <laughs> he may as well do that and shit all over his Sunderland legacy, like what he's done. To I mean, Liverpool Jesus, one. if he does that, yeah, you're right, you're right, Jules. He has gone. He's gone. He's gone off the fucking scale if he does that. Jesus Christ. Uh, Arsenal's problems today, just once again, we we talked about it earlier in the season. Just highlights like how the lack of like quality top strikers that are knocking about at the moment. Um, yeah. Because you think like they obviously need one. Uh, Jesus isn't it? Even if he when he's fit, I don't think he's it. So who would you even go and get though? That's available. Like you know, United spent seventy odd million on on that um, Hoyland, and he mm. you know he scored like one goal in the Premier League, uh, and that was against Aston Villa's Highland. So I'm not sure that should count. Yeah. Um, so so like, what's your solution? You like it's good. It would only be like. Um, this is Spurs are after Werner. They've signed on loan from Leipzig. Have yeah, they signed him now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. On loan from Leipzig, and you know, I looked at his his stats, and he don't need like he hadn't played very much. I don't know if he's been injured. But he didn't play very much for Leipzig, and he hadn't scored many goals, which won't be a surprise to anyone who saw him play for Chelsea. So unless you like, you're gonna to have to make a really, really like left field signing that if it comes off you can you can all like pat yourselves on the back and say that's a really good smart sign yeah. our, our scouting department knew that because otherwise I just don't see what's out there at the moment it's like a real a real problem at the moment yeah well the, and the Arsenal have thing. this problem he's yeah, not gonna, Tony I like him he's a really good player he's not going to solve their problems but Brentford 100 can't million, afford though. to sell him yeah the price is too and, much and, and Arsenal Brentford can't afford to buy him Brentford are on the brink of getting dragged into like a relegation battle yeah especially because mm. Luton have picked up so much uh, and Bermo's out for months, so I just don't think that Brentford can sell him. But like, that's no, a good point about like the the, the lack of strikers available. I mean, everyone goes on about the lad from Napoli, don't they? But his goal scoring record's not great if you take penalties away. No. Yeah. So and again, like you're talking like stupid money for these players. But it's funny because it would obviously it would never happen in a million years. But Harry Kane could have possibly won Arsenal <laughs> the league. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. If you put Harry Kane yeah. in there, that yeah. that yeah. could have potentially turned them into champions. But obviously, there's like no way that would ever happen. It's got to be something to do with the, the death of the death of strikers. Has got to be something to do with the way the game over the last ten years kind of moved away from the number it's nine. Wide forwards now, isn't it? Wide yeah, forwards yeah. and false mm-hmm. nines, and now it definitely is. There's the not two managers top are trying to bring it back. There aren't yeah. any there. Yeah, you know, Guardiola, not, yeah. Klopp want them back, and and they've they paid big money to get the players they think are right for them. But um, there's nothing around for other for other people at all. That's a good point, that Jules. Or even like Jared Bowen's right up there with the top scorers, but again, it's wide forward, isn't it? Yeah, like, he has played yeah. through the middle a bit recently as well. Like, but generally speaking, he's he's not he's not a number nine. And unbelievably, we've got three who can play through the middle, <laughs> and yeah. one of them is, a, is a, like an absolute solid goal finisher. Again, if he was playing for Arsenal, they'd be in a lot different uh, shape than they are now. Uh, one is um, erratic, um, but again, you know, if he's playing up top for Arsenal and getting getting the chances, I'm sure if he has scored one today at least. And then the other one, again, a, a decent finisher, probably a better finisher than Nunez is currently at the moment, uh, is Gakpo. But again, probably better than what you've got going on at the moment. You bring in like Trossard, who's all right, but like, it's it's you know. You know, we've had them over the years in Liverpool squads. You know when you're sending a player on to rescue a game and you think, oh, if that's what we're bringing on to rescue a game, we're in a bit of trouble. Mm. And Trostad's like a, a, a good to have, but he's not a nice to have. He's, he's okay, but I, I wouldn't be... If, he, if he's what I'm bringing on to rescue a game, I'd be I'll try and win a game, I'd be like... Phew. He'd be kind of it's, like a it's, poor man's Jota. You know... That that role in the squad where he's not necessarily mm. going to start yeah. all the time. He'd probably be like a poor man's Jota is just someone who doesn't score goals, so that's kind of pointless. <laughs> oh, like, I want to talk about you... Jota because <laughs> he did something when he came on today, and a lot of people won't have even like thought anything of it. But to me, it just sums up what he's got that like virtually nobody else in our team's got. When he got Saliba booked. Saliba didn't actually do anything. He did. It wasn't even a foul. Saliba did nothing. Jota was his reaching arm, back. He? He was his no, Jota was reaching back, holding Saliba's shirt. Wouldn't <laughs> let go of his shirt. And Saliba's like dead close to him because Jota's dragging him along with him. And then he falls over. But there's like the, it's, Saliba does not make a challenge. He doesn't do anything at all. And he gets booked for it. And it was purely just because like how streetwise Jota is. And nobody else in our squad does stuff like that. You know, he's he's just so clever, and if you can do something like that, if you get Saliba on a yellow card, it affects how he's going to play the rest of the game. Little things like that, just the, the dark arts that Jota's got. We don't we don't have anyone else who ever does anything like that. It's just it's no, it's one of his best qualities. In the face. He's, he's just a sneaky bastard. But yeah. would have been man of the match if he'd played longer. Yeah, he every, rightfully he did, man of the was match. Really good, wasn't he? I, have you seen um, Have you seen the Klopp's quote on Verge not being ruled out? Yeah. <laughs> have you no, seen it? Read it on Jules. Seen it. Klopp said <laughs> um, it's difficult to uh, it's difficult for Virgil to look shit, but he did, so we sent him home. <laughs> <laughs> Stick that on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that then? Was that yesterday's training? It must have been. Yeah. It must have been. He probably had like a heavy cold or something. It's going like around. That. Loads of people have got it, haven't they? So Yeah. Well, it's winter. But I thought I thought the Canate again. Yeah. Uh considering Verge wasn't there, tough away game, you know, um him and Kwanza faultless almost. Yeah. Well they were faultless. We didn't concede a goal, so I suppose you could concede, you could <laughs> yeah, but... faultless. <laughs> we didn't concede yeah. a goal, but I mean we did everything but concede the goal. But that wasn't it wasn't because of the two centre backs. Like no. they, they did play no. really well. And Gomez obviously but I've, I've been talking, talking about Quanta saying I, I want to see Quanta under some pressure and I thought he came under proper pressure today and he emerged mm. with his head held high. Um I'm not saying we were in control at the, in that first half because we weren't but he was able to weather a high pressure storm there and um and he kept, he maintained his game he kept playing his game he didn't he didn't start shit and he didn't start like panicking he maintained his composure continued to try and play it out uh, at the right time um, lay it off into midfield i thought i thought Quanzel were really good but the, but the main man was clearly Canate. yeah he was absolutely fantastic 
Um, I thought Trent had a good game as well. I, I thought Trent half. was man of the match. I know Canate got it. I wouldn't argue too much with that, but I thought Trent was really good. I know he got walked past a couple of times, but I think the second time is he was still trying to fix his boot. He, when he went behind the goal, is like I think his boot came off and he was trying to fix that, and then he come back out and he got ran at again. He got Meg, didn't he? Yeah. But it just reminds you know what, me though? of the first game. He go past Trent and then Canate is just there to stop him. Yeah, and, and I'm just so not interested in that whole narrative anymore about Trent. I just don't give a shit. I mean, mm. it's just if people are talking about that, they don't get his game. Yeah, don't understand him as a player. And to be fair, Lineker basically said that on. Uh, Said that after the game himself. He said, "Do we just do we overanalyze the little mistakes that Trent sometimes makes? Um, put too much emphasis on that, and not enough emphasis on everything else that he does? Because he's like basically the best passer of the ball in England." Definitely, he's right. I've he's said that for ages. Right. Everyone like overanalyzes it, yeah. And then Reece nice James will get walked it, past, though. and nobody says anything. And like Kieran Trippier is giving away goals every single week, and it's like nothing's made of that either. Um, but as soon as Trent gets someone, go, a winger goes past him, it's like, oh, look at this. It's like, oh, shut up. It's like, it's just, I tell you what, though, we got to talk about Connor Bradley because he was fucking, fucking brilliant hell. when he came on. Amazing. So good, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. I mean, he put Martinelli in his back pocket, didn't yeah. he, when he came it's on? Outstanding. Fucking hell. Absolutely outstanding. And he was getting forward as well. He was, yeah, yeah. I, I, I passing the ball. Well, he put a cross in, didn't he? It was a really yeah, good cross. That was, if, yeah. Someone, yeah. if someone had been just in the six yard box following in, that would have been a certain goal. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, need to see more. And of that him. defensive he head that he put out for the corner, real good concentration. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Self awareness. Yeah, yeah. No, it was just very composed again. Bit like, bit like Canar, a bit like uh, Quanza, really, really, really composed for his age in the given, yeah. given the position he plays. He's good. The last game he came on. I, what was he came on? I don't even remember. It was against, uh, and he played it really well. He's looked yeah, good, it wasn't hasn't he? This level though, was it? it was, no, but it was playing uh, a different level. He's, look, he's looked good whenever he's thing. played. We need to see more of him. Like, uh, it wouldn't be averse to him starting in midweek, and maybe Trent in midfield. You know, I, I wouldn't have any any issue with that. I think we do need to. Um, Mix it up a little bit, like you know, get the likes of him and Owen Beck's being brought back. He could use, do you see why he couldn't play today? Yeah, what, yeah. that's unbelievable. It wasn't even like ridiculous. the Scottish FA Cup, it was the Scottish League Cup. He'd had two bookings like back in August. Do you know what that smacked of the club not realizing to me? You know, yeah, they brought, I think they brought him back and he was, I mean, he got, I think, I believe he was told he was going to be in the squad today and then. Suddenly that story came out. I don't think they realised when they brought him back that he wasn't going to be available for today's game. We can play in the next round, though. It was only one game, wasn't it? So Yeah. He yeah. be, can play in the League Cup and, and the next next round of the FA Cup as well. Yeah. When is that? Is that is that the end of the month? Uh, I know it's well most. What's this? The away. FA Cup? Yeah. Yeah. The FA Cup. I think it's the... Hang on a second. I'll check it. Connor Bradley played against West Ham in the... Carabao Cup, according to what I'm looking at. Yeah. Is that the game you're thinking of, Dave? Yeah, I think it was. I think... The FA Cup fourth rounds at the end of the month. I think it's there's no Premier League that weekend. Um, yeah. Hang on a second, what, I'll tell you. When's the draw? It'll be after United's uh, tomorrow game, night. Won't it? Won't no, it's United. before United's game before, tomorrow night. Right, yeah. yeah. Tomorrow. FA. Yeah. It'll be City away, uh, won't it? <laughs> Actually, no, it won't be City away because City never get a tough game. So, um, yeah, it won't be that. It'll be like Chelsea away. Chelsea away, Spurs yeah. away, United away, it'll be something like that. Yeah, four, fourth round is um, weekend, Saturday the 27th of January. Sound. So, and we, we've got Fulham, what, on Wednesday, and then there's uh, we got a weekend off because of the winter break. Yeah, glad we've still got that break. So, I think the players yeah, need it. Don't want, want no replay today. Did no, I don't think anyone wanted the replay. Yeah. yeah. I think I believe he's given them. They're not doing like a winter camp. I believe he's given them a bit of time away to go and have a little break, and that, that would just do your head in so much, wouldn't it? If you uh, you had a little holiday planned, and like five or six days away in the sunshine, and you have it whipped away. Yeah, like Everton, they've got to play a replay, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cancel your holidays, boys. <laughs> no, I, I thought we'd have done warmer weather training again. So yeah, I'm glad we're not because we always come back from that and we're fucking shit. Yeah, <laughs> inexplicably because you think yeah. they should come back like primed and ready to go, and we always come back just like it's like a dog's dinner, don't we? So yeah, let always let them just go them. off, enjoy themselves, and then get back to it. 
You can subscribe to the Liverpool Way podcast on all the major platforms, whether it's Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon or Podbean. Just search for the Liverpool Way, leave us a review and hit subscribe to automatically receive all new episodes. You can also head to liverpoolway.co.uk and grab a TLW season ticket for just £3 a month. There's tons of exclusive content including match reports from every Liverpool game, weekly Premier League roundups, the TLW diary and access to the members only forum. Lastly, you can follow us on social media at the Liverpool Way on Twitter and at the Liverpool Way TLW on Instagram and Facebook. Um, did we have any chances in the first half? Trent hit the bar. Did, did we do anything else? That was a lovely move, think, by, by the way. Like. It was, and it was a great strike as well. Yeah, it was. It was a controlled strike. At yeah. first, I thought he just smashed it, but when you watch the replay, he clipped it. It was a lovely controlled strike. That would have been a hell of a goal. But Gakpo's turn and run from that was quality as well to yeah. play him in. Yeah, but we didn't do much else. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I can't think of anything else. No. Um, we had we had opportunities, but it was the the old culprit of. Um, the final ball was lacking, yeah. so you ended it ended up just going down a blind alley or something. I think Darwin had a header, didn't he, from a, a corner? Great, oh, yeah, great leap, run. but didn't didn't really direct. Really it. good leap, but just yeah, wasn't on target. Yeah, but half time, I I knew we were going to win because Arsenal had missed so many chances. The crowds were getting dead frustrated, and it's us. You know, we'll be better in the second half. We always play better in the second half of games. And there was counter-attacking opportunities there that we just did not take in the first half. You know, there's a few times when it's like one pass and like Darwin or Diaz would have been in, but, you know, we just didn't play the pass at the right time. So the opportunity was there and I thought, we'll do something in the second half, we'll get one breakaway and we'll score. That's not really what happened because we scored from a set piece. But we, we did have like a few counter-attacks, didn't we? And just didn't, just wasn't there. Like the one when Darwin runs through and plays oh, it behind Diaz. Like, oh. Horrendous. Yeah, it's a really good opportunity and didn't take advantage of that. We had others as well. Um, and it was end to end. Like Saka missed two chances in about five minutes for them. Really bad misses as well. I mean, star yeah. boy. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, he, he wasn't impressive. <laughs> Go and sit in he? the corner, star boy. <laughs> but it was the game was uh, the game was definitely crying out for Jota, wasn't it? It just I'm watching it. Second half we come out, I just think Jota is gonna come on here and make the difference. Especially because it's you Arsenal. Could just tell he was yeah, he's the he's mm. the only proper striker who was on the pitch all uh, all match. The only person who's in form who can finish. And uh, as soon as he came on the pitch, you just thought he'll be the difference here, and, and he largely was, I think. Just clever little turns and just link and play yeah. and like popping it off wide and, no, and then getting it back. No one to drop, no yeah. one to push, no one to carry the ball, when to lay it off. Just all the decision making, you know. Yeah. Just uh, just he's a clever player. He's such a weird one. player though, because like there's every chance that he starts on Wednesday. And looks like he's never kicked a footy in his life. It's, yeah, it's but we've not so seen weird. that from him this season, really, have we? That that is true prior to this season, but we've not really seen that this season. No, I'm sure he, he did. He, I think he came on as a sub in a game, and he was absolutely wretched early in the season. Um, yeah, you're, you're wasting your time asking me that, Paul. I'm well, yeah, you. that's why. <laughs> I remember the little things, like I remember the fact that there was a game where he looked horrendous, but I couldn't tell you what the game was. Um, like. I could have done at one point, but now that's my brain doesn't work like that anymore. Um, the more interesting, um, the more interesting if um, thing on Wednesday if he plays is how Diaz plays because that's now two games from Diaz where he's looked more yeah, like yeah. proper Diaz, the real Diaz. He's so, turned the corner, I think. Um, well, hopefully, it's only a very small sample size, but it's two, you know, two games in a row. Um, Pleased with so, how he looked on the right as well, weren't you? Mm. Mm, yeah. Well, to be fair, again, as I said, to, to be fair to Dave, he did give, he did say that in the Newcastle game that we probably should see him on the right yeah. when Mo's away. Um, and it certainly seems the best fit because Nunez looks fine out on the left, and Jota, you know, when he knows how to play football, looks good through the middle. But it was a cracking finish for him for his for his goal. Yeah, it was. esque I thought. Yeah. Sensational yeah. finish. Yeah. I called that oh, as well, yes. you know, you know, like two minutes, two minutes into stoppage time, and I said to me dad, Arsenal had like a free kick or something, or like, like they were pushing forward, and my dad's like, yeah, we just got to see this one out. I was like, nah, said, you know what? We're going to get one more chance on the counter attack because the way they're throwing men forward, and we'll finish them off two 0 and then, like a minute later, 
it happened. But I just I, thought that was so I, obvious that that was going to happen. No, because some teams at 1-0 like that would have just not, you know, if you get a chance to counter-attack, they maybe take it to the corner or just try and buy yeah. a free kick and kill the game. You could see, like, when our players, when we got a chance to counter-attack, they were flying forward. They wanted to score. Didn't Even, they? They like, Connor Bradley's, like, charging forward yeah, to support yeah. the attack. They wanted to just finish the game it? off, yeah. You could see they wanted to finish it off and did it in style, but, really. The uh, the contrast with that, and then like Ramsdale having the ball, and like everyone shouting at him to get up up the field, yeah. and then he takes another touch before getting yeah. up the field. Like that hesitancy, that lack of not a, not lack of urgency. Well, I suppose it is a little bit of a lack of urgency, but just that lack of nous and um, hesitancy was quite was quite uh, startling as well. Diapers. Arsenal are in a bit of bother. Yeah, yeah, well, he is, but Arsenal are a little bit of bother here because they're in a real bad run of form. By the time they come out of it, it might be too late for everything this season, apart from maybe the Champions League, because it doesn't come the back only, for another month. Yeah, the only thing in their favour, really, is there's not too many games over the next mm. few weeks. If the games were coming thick and fast and they were in like the run that they're in, they could find themselves out of it, but they're out the cup now, so that'll be like another free weekend off. Um, everyone, The winter break's weird, isn't it? It's, uh, not everyone's yeah. off at the same time. So, Strange. Arsenal have got a yeah, lead. Arsenal's next week off game's week. Crystal yeah. Palace at, at the Emirates. But their goal-scoring thing isn't going away, is it? It's not going anywhere. They've got a problem with scoring goals. And if you're struggling like the way they are to score goals, I tell you what, Crystal Palace is not really a team you want to play against. You know, with like their counter-attack, and because the, they'll just defend, and then they've got like the, the Eze and, and Elise just quality on the break. That's a game that you don't really want if when you, you're struggling to score goals. So. Six teams in the league with a better scoring record than them now. Mm. So they're in fourth, but there's, there's six other teams who've, who've scored more than them this season. Which is, which is not great. Us, really, us and City. Who's the other? Who's the others? Uh, Villa. Newcastle. Um, Spurs. Brighton. Brighton. Yeah. Newcastle. Yeah. Fair play. Yeah. They're, they're not yeah. Brighton. In fact, let me just scroll down, make sure there's no one else. Not Chelsea. Chelsea as well. No, Chelsea aren't. So yeah, they've got, they have got a problem. No, they couldn't goals, score for half the season. They were they were having not, they were losing one 0 all the time, weren't they? They've got no one, they've got no goals again. The goal scoring problem. They haven't got a striker yeah, either. That's right. The um, I don't know whether that and Kunku is going to be any good or not. He's only just back from injury, but yeah, they uh, they miss loads of chances. Chelsea. They, what yeah. do we think the significance of today was in terms of the next league game, boys? Uh, is the one? What is our next league game? Is it Bournemouth? Uh, sorry, no, again, against away. them, sorry. Oh, against, against them. Against Arsenal. Yeah, that, oh, oh, no, no, no there's, definitely, there's definitely a significance there because it's in their head. Particularly as it was at their place. Especially if that game starts and they miss a few chances in the first 10 minutes. It'll be like, oh, here mm. we go again. It's, and there's a chance um, Mo could be back for that, fourth, that game. Yeah, there's a chance. No, will be back I, for that, if they get, It could be, but they'd have to go out in the quarterfinals, I think. Right. I think uh, I don't think there's a chance otherwise. It's fe- I say it's February the fourth. I think he'd miss. I think he's more or less going to miss that. It, 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 it's funny because it, it might be like on the on the bubble if they go out a little bit later and you think oh he won't be able to play because he'll be tired and then you think no he will play yeah. of course he will yeah. most Salah <laughs> yeah. he will play. I I I'm just ruling him out for all of the fixtures and if he comes back early it's a bonus. You yeah. can't. Yeah. You can't work on the well. If they go out here, they go out there. Same with Endo, they're gone. Uh, they're coming back when the finals on this date. They'll be back after that for certain, and that's that's what you know. And anything else is a bonus. Um, there's, there's not much else you can do about it, to be honest. I mean, I'd uh, imagine Japan must be like the best team in Asia, mustn't he? You'd expect South Korea are good, aren't I think they? So, yeah. yeah, yeah. You'd expect Japan to be getting to like the final or the semi-finals at least. So I don't think Endo's going to be back anytime soon. Well, yeah, we just have to hope that uh, Egypt go out early. It'd be nice to have Mo back for that that Arsenal game, but we, we could win it anyway. Even if he's not here, we could still beat them. We've done it today, and we didn't even play well. So, I don't know, we played quite well second half, but we can play better, is, is the point. And, and Virgil back would be huge, I think, yeah, as well, yeah. just, just in terms of dealing with that press. Yeah, definitely. Because that was the only problem I thought we had in the first half, was just self-inflicted, giving the ball away when they pressed us. And then that's leading to chances because it wasn't like they were just playing through. It was like you know building from the back and moving up the pitch and playing through. Us, I thought we defended that really well. And like once mm-hmm. again, you know, I know Saka's had loads of chances, but I don't think like he, he got past Gomez once. 
After every time he tried to go at Gomez one v one, Gomez just took it off him. Yeah. He Japan just... are the highest ranked team in the Asian Cup, by the way. They're seventeenth in the FIFA rankings, mm. and they're, they're the odds on favourite. I'm just checking the odds now. Wow, yeah, Japan, any South team, Korea. Any team with Endo in it's going to be favourite, aren't they? I mean, what a player. Third favourite, that well known Asian, that well known Asian team, Australia. Fucking hell. <laughs> Because <laughs> they moved confederation. Just, the world just back, on Endo, they? you could definitely, you could definitely feel his absence today, couldn't you? First half. Yeah, I, I think, think so. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, just I think, think McAllister's was... rustiness doesn't help there, though, yeah. as well. No, absolutely. But I just think Endo sniffs out, sniffs out, um, you know, danger a little bit better than Maka does. Maka's more, more about being on the ball, retaining the ball, and what he does with it. I think Endo's got a better nose for danger. Um, without giving you too much compromise on the front foot either. That's the big surprise about him for me. Is how he's been able to get move the ball forward pretty quickly. Yeah, um, I thought Mac yeah, was so all right today, though. And I, no, yeah, all right. I would say all right. He was tenacious. He was, you know, he was putting his foot in. He was. But I just thought, people. particularly the first twenty minutes, he was he was just getting. He wasn't doing much at all. He might as well not been there, you know. And particularly, he couldn't get on the ball. That's, that's that was the big thing for yeah. me. I wanted him on the ball in the first twenty just to get a bit of control. And there was there wasn't any at all. Well, they were they um, were targeting that though, weren't they? They were making sure yeah. he couldn't get on. Yeah. Big yeah. fan of him telling Saka to fuck off as well when he, he was rolling <laughs> round when there's nothing wrong with him. Remember yeah. when, like he just he ran into Maka on the edge yeah. of the box. There's like yeah. nothing in it at all, yeah. and he's rolling around. You know what? I, th- that just reminds me. We need to talk about Arsenal and the fucking letter that they wrote to PGM. Well, can that, we also that talk is at the, the same most time about... pathetic thing I've ever heard in my life? You fucking cry baby bastards. Yeah, like, referees now should be like, you know what? We're not even giving them free kicks. Fuck that. Because he's third on the list of most foul players. It, 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 I just, I'm blown away by the fact Arsenal wrote to PGMOL complaining about how like Saka's being treated by opponents. If I'm like Howard Webb, I'm just pointing to the thing. I'm going, well, yeah. We agree. That's why he's third on the list. The refs agree with you. He's getting fouled a lot. He's third. Shouldn't they be right into the Premier League games? instead? It's mad. I don't know what they're doing. The I don't know. Well, first asses. of all, you shouldn't be writing. You shouldn't be writing to anybody because yes, he's the third. He's got. He's he's the third most foul. Therefore, he's winning the, one of the mo- third most free kicks. But yeah, you're right. If you, do you know who's number one? Into the refs. Eh? Do, do you know who's number one? Uh, yeah, um, Jordan Ayew. Yeah. Yeah, Jordan, Jordan Ayew. Fucking hell. Who the fuck's fouling Jordan Ayew? I just feel like, yeah, go on, lad, you can have it. His That's own fine. players, probably. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. And it's not even close. He's about 20 ahead of like the next one. Bizarre. But anyway, Jules, carry on. Carry on. Yeah, well, Ayew might just be smarter at winning free kicks mm. than most. I don't know. Maybe that's yeah. part of it. But yeah, you wouldn't be right. The, the refs are giving you the free kicks. So what? Do you want them to give you more free uh, better free kicks uh, more bookings for these players or realistically you should i mean you shouldn't be writing to anybody it's ridiculous but in theory if you were writing you'd be writing to the premier league to complain about heavy-handed treatment to a, a to an england international there's nothing else i just it's a it's just a bizarre it's like they've they've misunderstood what you write to the pgoml mol for and just thought we're right to the it's like one of those joke things where you're like Someone says they write to the government because their newspaper didn't get delivered. It's like it's nothing to do with them, but I'll write to them anyway. It's that kind of thing. It just makes no sense because you are getting the bookings. You are getting the fouls. You know what it is? Do you know my... well, if, if you open your window, you know what it is. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> I just, go on, you. I... Pure undistilled <laughs> Arsenal is what That's that not, is. Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> sniff it. Take it in in the, in the cold night air. Uh, do you know it, what? While we're, talk, while we're talking on. about bookings or no bookings, what the fuck with Jorginho telling the referee to fuck off and waving his arm at him in the first ten minutes after the most and blatant then, free kick of the game where he's and then Harvey back. getting booked for doing the same yeah. thing later in the game? And I thought the referee had a good game to he be did. fair. I thought yeah, he let I it agree. flow. I agree. Um, and there was nothing controversial really. But just, I just, why is it all these? Did Did you say it on the last pod, Dave? Or in, in one of your match reports or something. Every single time there's some sort of overall referee and initiative, we get held for him, and then it's everyone else gets away with it. Yeah, yeah it was the last part. It's it's bizarre. Do you, know what, do you know what's happened? What happens is though they put in these weird little rule infringements, which in theory is a good idea, because you know you you don't want keepers holding on too long for the ball. You don't you want keepers to stay on their lines. You want pe- players to respect the referees. 
but there's no real appetite to do it because they realize it's so endemic that to do it to mm. enforce it thoroughly you'd have you'd have like nine men on the pitch at, at different games you would be sending people off and then yeah. everyone would be in uproar because you're wrecking games because you're sending players off or you're booking players and eventually sending them off because they've told someone to fuck off that's the problem yeah they the, the plays are such cheats are so out of hand there was i know about a month or so ago it was moved to that I'm not a big fan of the Simbin concept, to be honest, but there was also mooted that only only captains were allowed to speak to the referee. Now, in theory, that's a good idea. But again, it won't work because someone will still run past after after making a blatant foul and then the referee will say something they'll go, fuck off. Because that's just what players are like. They're cheats. They're all cheats. They're all out to try and get whatever they can. And it's, it's just completely... It, it, it's... It, you're thinking of an, a, a utopian ideal where this initiative would come in and all the players would go, oh, we'd better stop. They're not going to stop. No. And they realise they're not going to stop. And that's why they throttle back on it because they realise they're going to be booking everybody. So you're gonna, it's just going to go back to normal like it always does. Well, it's exactly like um, share pulling on set pieces and it's like they're yeah. going to give penalties for that. There'll be like one unlucky bastard team that'll get a penalty given against them for that and then everyone else just carries on. And I'm sure what happens, they already know they must already know, but I'm sure what happens is they'll review a weekend of action and they'll see how many there were and they think, oh, fucking hell, if we apply this yeah. to the letter we've we've prescribed, we're going to have about 40 penalties yeah. minimum every weekend and everyone's going to be fuming at us. <laughs> yeah, okay. Everyone's going to be fuming at us because you think that they seem to think that if they put the law in, the players will, will go, ooh, we're not do that. But they'll just go, now I'll do it until I'm penalised yeah. and then that, go fuck yourselves. Yeah. So it's just, it's just we've just been unfortunate that we've been on the brunt of them a few times. But like there are other teams that have got it. It's just like we seem to have had it more often than others when these initiatives come in. They come and they go all the time and it lasts a few months and then it goes. Yeah, the Jorginho one was outrageous today because he, he grabs the shirt and then lets go of the shirt and then he grabs it again and pulls him back and then he the free kick gets given and he turns and he screams like, fuck off, as though he's being hard done by. I'm like, that's outrageous. Yeah. That's like as clear a free kick as you'll see. Harvey's one. I don't think Harvey even touches him, but Jorginho's just being like, you know, the wily old pro, just like, oh, there's a little bit of contact in me back. I'm just going down here, get me free kick. So I can understand like... Harvey thinking that's not a foul and I'm reacting to it. But how are you booking one and not the other? And it's like the Diaz one the other night against Newcastle. I watched that back and Diaz didn't even say anything. He never said a word. He just turned and like he did what Harvey did with his arm. You know, like he just like threw out his arm in frustration. And I think it was Paul said on, on the pod, like he stopped the game to uh, to actually book Diaz. He did. He stopped the game, stopped the Newcastle counter attack. So we could book Diaz for descent, and it's like, well, what are you doing? Because you're letting other stuff go, and then you're pulling that back. That the, the consistency is just infuriating. Um, and if I'm if I'm Elliot, I'm pissed off that I've got a yellow card there when other players were doing it and nothing happened. But as I say, apart they, from that, he did have a good game. The referee, I thought, and although VAR was, was in operation today, we didn't see it at all, did we? Lovely, no, that was, lovely. Yeah. Really nice. There were some yeah. top tactical fouls by us as well at towards the end getting booked. There was, in. yeah. Bobby yeah. Clark. Big, Bobby Clark yeah. coming on, getting himself a yellow card. He's right, lad. Trent got one as well. Trent got one as well, one as yeah. Well. yeah. Did, yeah. did Connor Bradley get one as well? No, I don't think so. Did he take no. a booking? No, no, maybe not. No. Maybe not. No, I think it was I think it was Clark. Yeah, it was, it was Clark, yeah. Clark, you're thinking of. But no, love that. Like, give them a free kick in their own half because nothing's going to come of that, especially when Ramsdale's time wasting over them. <laughs> yeah, thick yeah, bastard. Well, that's the other problem Arsenal have, right? Because they they've got the like the nucleus of a really good competitive team, but both ends of the pitch, goalkeeper and and striker, they don't have it. Absolutely. And that's why they and that's why they're falling short because the goalkeeping thing. I don't know if I've said it on the pod. I'm sure I have, but. It's the old NFL quarterback thing. Yeah. If you have two quarterbacks, then you have no quarterbacks because there's oh you can it, like Highlander. There can be only one. You have a yeah. you have your main goalkeeper. He's your man, and that's it. There's nothing else. But if if you buy if you buy two, and it's it was the same with Dudek and Kirkland. Eventually, Dudek won out because you cannot have two. It doesn't work. No. It never works. 
And that, I think that, we've actually that, balanced that really well, haven't we? We've done that dance well over the last few years, having like you know an, an old veteran who's quite happy to be the old veteran, and basically help with training, and then a kid who's coming through who has potential, uh, but also also knows his role. I, I think I think that's um, you know why that is. People have dealt with really well because Alison's because fucking we, amazing. Yes, because Alison is 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 the sun of which around it, everything else orbits there at that position, right. and so you be. can. And you can have that flexibility, and it is the right choice because you can't you can't have too good a backup because they're going to be pissed off. Like it might, well, I thought it might. We thought it might happen with Kelleher, but then he's he's looked like maybe a little bit less than we thought in in his appearances so, yeah. um, this season. Really but good backup, it, rather than yeah. First but but team we goal at one either. point we thought we might have to sell him because yeah. he might be yeah. too good, but now it might it, now it looks like maybe it's it's not it's not that. But it, once you have the, the the concrete in the middle. You can then play around with having the having the veteran and having the young kid and and everyone learning off each other. But that's Arsenal's problem. They've whether Ray is better than Ramsdale. You should have sold Ramsdale. You you can't have that. You can't have that sort of um, continuous questions. And he's it, not it, it, clearly does, better, is he? No, he might no, be I, better, I, but it's not a big big. It gap. becomes noise as well. It's a lot of noise yeah. for everyone to drown out, like about who's the better one. And within the squad, it'll become noise. And then again at the other end, as 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 we said. They don't have a clear top quality striker. If they and sold maybe, those, maybe they, they could sold, have dealt with that one, Jules. If they'd sold Ramsdale, as you're suggesting, so if yeah, they'd they, sold they, Ramsdale. But I don't think Ray. Yeah, they would have solved it, but Ray is Ray isn't it either. So the problem is that you, you you actually need to sell both of them and find a better goalkeeper. But they, they, like Allison for us, and it was it was Allison and Verge for us. Yeah, it's it's an Allison and a a Mo. For Arsenal, if they yeah. can sign, if they can find and sign those, t- and they might have to break the bank, but I don't know if they can. Yeah, now. but what? if if they the- signed him, Mal, he'd just be on the bench because he'd be behind Starboy. <laughs> Why did they sign Havertz? Why did they sign Havertz? I don't understand what they did. Because they could, I think, because they they Bizarre. saw the Chelsea fire sale and thought take 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 advantage. Not what they needed at all, and it's so it's been proven. I think well, it's not like Arsenal to stockpile a load of attacking midfielders at the expense yeah. of everything else, particularly <laughs> ones who can't score. In this case, yeah, that's just that's, I'm, I'm so surprised Arsenal have gone down that route. But they have a chance. They, but I don't know if they, again, I don't know if there's a striker available, and uh, I don't know if there's a goalkeeper available. Because look at what United did. I don't... Fashion, yeah. <laughs> well, look, United did. They downgraded effectively. I don't think anyone can say Anana's better than De Gea was, even when De Gea was on the slide. No, that's true. And it's spent t- so it's much tough money as well. Yeah, it's but tough. But it goes there. back to what you said before, Jules, about strikers. I think it's even worse with goalkeepers. Mm. And we're mm. so lucky. <laughs> we're so we lucky really are. Yeah. We've got. We don't even have to think about that. We don't even have to worry about it at all. And everyone else is like looking for an upgrade. Um, apart, there's only really I'd say us and I'm sure City are more than happy with their goalkeeper the, the style of play yeah. they have he's a perfect fit for them but everyone else is probably thinking yeah we could maybe but Spurs' goalkeeper's done really well actually Martinez is good for Villa I think at that level he's good for them yeah fucking I think he's a good he's, he's, he's like a good not great he's not great but he's got, he's a tw- maybe he's got Arsenal a shouldn't have sold him yeah, well, that's a, that's a good point. Low, and Leno with Fulham as well. Like they've had, they've gone through a lot. And you say we're lucky, Dave, but like let's not forget, we had nigh on thirty years yeah. of goalkeepers coming out and missing the ball. And like, so you had David James who couldn't come out and catch a ball. You had Brad Friedel who couldn't come out and punch a ball. I mean, he made a massive error at Old Trafford in one yeah. game against them. You had Vesterveld who let Dean Holdsworth score from 25 yards out with a P roller because it went through him. Punched one into his like, own net as well from a corner. Oh, yeah, Chelsea. Yeah. Mm. Um, Fucking Carius. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, the Carius was like the the alt. <laughs> he was like the final boss of bad goalkeepers. He was goalkeepers, the Nadea, wasn't he? Because yeah. he cost us the, the European the Cup. Thing. <laughs> yeah, that. he cost us the European well, Cup. Let's not forget the Meg. Yeah, well, I liked him. I, he was okay. Mignolet he was, he was, was the like, blandest. He was the blandest of the lot, wasn't yeah. he? Really? He's what Arsenal have now. Yeah. You think you've got something, but you don't, because there's two. It's you've like got every okay, now and then, not great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Mignolet was. He was yeah. all right, Mignolet, but he wasn't what you needed. He wasn't that you needed for that final push, which is ultimately what the conclusion Klopp came to. Yeah, and like Arteta needs to come to. But again, it's easy to say it. Maybe he does know that. And maybe I think he, he did come to that find... conclusion. But he, yeah, 
he maybe can't find the keeper. Choice, but he obviously and, and they haven't they haven't got the money now, have they? Profit and sustainability rules are hurting them because they they they've spent too much on players they don't really need. They've got to sell come back to have it again. Yeah. Why maybe if they, they sold Starboy, yeah. Star boy with all you know the academy prospect. That's Can you imagine the fume? Full amortization on that, like if they sold him. <laughs> Chelsea would probably buy him as well for like fucking five hundred million spread yeah. over like twenty years, and then sell Conor Gallagher and Reese James to pay for him or yeah. something mad. God, <laughs> ah, I, I think we need to focus on um, how brave Klopp was with the subs today. Like Very last 15 brilliant. minutes, it's nil nil, it's Arsenal away, it's a game where you know what? he's given I, I, loads I, of chances away, and he did that. I thought when he brought the two kids on, I thought, I mean, part of me, my, my initial reaction was... I knew Paul would be buzzing off this as well, when he <laughs> came on. <laughs> my initial right reaction in was, Jürgen, Jürgen doesn't give a fuck if we go out. And then I just ran myself in and thought, no, he will want to win this, he will, there'll be some plan for these two. And it'll be a statement of trust. And I'll be thinking, even if we do go out, okay, not a big deal, a fewer games. But he can he can use it in terms of his development plan with those two lads to say, I trusted you in that game. And the, the great thing about the way Klopp is with players is that, you know, the trust is borne out. Neither of them looked overawed. They came into a big fucking away game there, high profile FA Cup against Arsenal on national telly. Very few games are on national telly anymore. That'll be one of the highest audiences for a football match in years yeah. tonight. Um, and uh, those two came on and acquitted themselves absolutely brilliantly. I thought Bradley slightly better than um, Bobby Clark. It's more but Bobby Clark was still though. really good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And didn't do anything wrong. You know, they 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 quite. What I really love about when we see some of our young lads come in, particularly when they come into the team with senior players around them, rather than like it's all of them, is that they they understand what's expected of them. They don't do anything mad. They know what the role is. Um, that was a big big statement, and I think that kind of gets. You know, people talk about the risk and reward thing with Klopp all the time, but without quite focusing on just as you said, Dave, just how brave it is to consistently make these big calls all the time to trust players to put them in there. And and he genuinely, I think, if it backfires, he genuinely sees it as being on him rather than on them. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why he's so great at developing young players because they don't they don't feel the risk. Mm. He takes the risk on himself. The club. The individuals reap the rewards. I mean, it was huge. It was absolutely huge shout, I thought. And uh, yeah, you're right. Brave is the word. I thought it was a fantastic decision. When was the last time like that we brought? I'm not talking about when what you said there about like sometimes we play a weakened team in the cups and stuff. And you know, from the start, when was the last time we a kid came off the bench for us and actually looked nervous? I I can't remember. It they it don't. always like it, it amazes me at how like. There's Pretty no clock, nerves. They're totally calm. Yeah. You know what I'm going to say, right? I don't think he was on the bench, but you know, you know what I'm going to say? Yeah. Come on. The la- the Ayala. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've no, spoke about it before on the pod. Yeah, right? I think he started, game, though. He did. Yeah, but that's the last time I thought that. He, he was overawed, fucking yeah. terrified. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, he went on to have a decent career after us as well, didn't he? He's still he? playing. He got sent yeah. off a few weeks ago. I'd, I'd, like, his seen on, like... Um, you know, like I was watching something and it was like a round up of like lower league games and he was getting himself sent off for something. But yeah, he's still playing. But he, he absolutely shit his pants that game. I can't remember who but they were right, playing. They it was like the... Fulham or someone at Anfield and yeah. But no, but like they don't want to clap, do they? We had that sixteen year old on the bench today, and I bet you if we'd have put him Leicester. on Yeah, if we'd have put him on, I bet you he'd have been like just been boss, yeah. cool as you like as well. But the yeah. thing with Conor Bradley, he's a bit more experienced. He's been out on loan. He was Bolton's Player of the Year last year. He's played for Northern Ireland, so he has got like experience of like playing at a decent level. But he came into that game when Martinelli had just come on and was flying. Like Martinelli came on and was just like he went past Trent twice in, in the space of a couple of minutes. He looked really dangerous, and Klopp sends him on, moves Trent into midfield, and he's basically saying to Conor Bradley, "Go on, you go, you go and deal with him," and he did. He did yeah. deal with him, yeah. <laughs> as well as like making an impact at the other end. Yeah, and I just think that was like so impressive. I want to see more of him. I, 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 we we yeah. need to see him get a start, and especially because like I'm not going over the whole Trent's role thing again. But once again, we've like people point to the record since Trent made that switch, and I'll say it again: how many times 
as Trent finished the game playing in midfield rather than like at right back. A load of those games, he's been moved into midfield for us to go and win the game. It's not he's not necessarily won it from the position that he started the game in, and it's happened again today. He goes into midfield and then we score two late goals. So there is definitely like the argument for for playing him in there, but I, I, I'm fine with where he is in in general. But I just like sometimes maybe mix it up, especially because. I want to see a little bit more of Conor Bradley. Plus the fact mm. that Joe Gomez, when the left backs are back, Joe Gomez is fucking boss at right back. So we have got like a lot of options there now. It's it's, it's really good. Do, do you know in some ways, Dave, this whole thing about what Klopp does to young players, it's the flip side of what we were saying. We've always said about the way players fall off a cliff when they leave him. Yeah, There is yeah. something about his character and his personality um, that just imbues players with a self-belief and a confidence. And I, th- I do think some of it's tactical as well. I do think some of it is about the system. You know, it's a very, very um, integrated system, isn't it, tactically, in terms of how mm. individuals all contribute to the overall team performance and the overall team performance lifts individual performances. But it, it's also about what Klopp does to the self-belief, I think. There are very few players in the Allison, um, Virgil and Salah mode who are just naturally huge, self-confident characters. Um, I think lots of them are, you know, I mean, clearly the top class athletes, you know, that there's a degree of self-belief, but, you know, susceptible to, to moments of doubt as well. And I think what Klopp does is just give these players a sense of self-belief in themselves and the team, um, which just lifts people when they play for him and then is glaring in its absence when they don't. Uh, he, is, he is incredible. He is absolutely incredible. By a mile, the best manager in the world. Mm-hmm. I say it all the time, but it's true. He is. Way better than Guardiola, and I don't, I don't look down, I don't look down my nose at Guardiola's ability, despite all the cheating. I think Guardiola is quite clearly a great coach and a great manager. But Klopp I look down my nose at his ability to grow in hair. <laughs> yeah, well, Paul can't do that, can he? <laughs> <laughs> no, the Guardiola thing, to me, I, I maybe I'm wrong, but whenever I look at Man City starting eleven. I look at it and go, how are these as good as they are? Because I don't think like that man for man. I don't think they're like amazing. And it, it comes down to him. I feel like mm, yeah. he gets, like if anyone else was in charge of Man City, we'd be fucking 15, 20 points clear yeah, off them. Definitely. With, with definitely. the players, even with the players they've got, we'd be miles ahead of them. So I give him all the credit in the world for, for what he does with like, you give him like a load of really good players and he'll make them better as a team. You know, he's getting like more than the sum of their parts. Like they should not be as this like irresistible force that they are every year. They shouldn't be that good with the team they've got. Like they've got like really good players, but not players who you look at and go, I "Wish we had him." I wish we had him. I don't feel like that they're that much better than everyone else. Like man for man, and they've actually got a small squad now as well. It's not like they've got like a dead strong bench or anything. I do think he gets more out of them than you know any other manager other than Klopp, probably would do. The difference between him and Klopp was, you know, the, well, there's the cheating, you know, whether it was like the, <laughs> or like the drug stuff, whether it's like the finances, like Referees anything, getting paid yeah, at Barcelona. anything to get an edge, whereas Klopp's not, not had any of that stuff, you know, and Klopp doesn't need like crazy money. He'll, Klopp, well, I know what Klopp the, the internet a, says, we have inhalers. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But Klopp could go and take over like a bottom six team and turn them into a top six team. I'm not saying he'd win the league with a bottom six team, but like bottom six within a couple of years, he'd have them like as a top six team. I don't think that Guardiola can go down a level and then be as as great as he is. I think he needs to have like or like really good players to work with, and then he'll make them even better. But he he needs a load of deck, doesn't he? That's the thing. He, everywhere the system is inherently less risky as well. Yeah. These footballers, it's, it's not without boring. risk. He does play some high risk stuff, but it's 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 more. It's much. It is relatively speaking much safer than what we. It's than like watching paint, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. So yeah, often when individuals boring. explode, but Guardiola, yeah. world class manager, just not as good as Klopp. Yeah, agreed. We are biased, but we're also right. Yeah, the two are not mutually exclusive concepts, yeah. are they? Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the goals then. Uh, Trent's delivery hadn't been great at times from set pieces, but 
I don't think the lad who scored the own goal, I don't think he could do anything about that. No, I think okay. Arsenal's you've got to get your head to it, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. so yeah. The, the, the guy, Gabriel, I think was in front of him, didn't deal with it. I don't know what Ramsdale's doing. Watch it again and look at Ramsdale. It's just Flapping, ridiculous. He? Yeah, he's, he's like, just watch it. It's ridiculous. He's like, so, I don't even know what he's doing. He's like, he, he wipes out Jota. And he's never getting to the ball. But the lad who scores the old goal has got to try to get his head on it and it just goes in. But um, delivery like that, is, it's always going to be really difficult to, to deal with. So, yeah, brilliant ball in by Trent and in front of our fans as well. It was nice, like, the celebration. Did you see the, uh, the lad who, who, who joined yeah, in the celebrations? Yeah, and yeah brilliant. <laughs> and Canato can like, can like, rag his hat off on Winger. Did uh, you see that as well? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're both just like <laughs> patting him on the head, and then Canati just lashes his hat into the crowd. No, that was that was boss. And then um, I, it gets to one 0 I did not think there was any chance that Arsenal were getting back into that. I kind of knew one 0 Yeah, that this is done. We'll probably get a second, and and we did. I think that 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 goal. It's it goes back to like what we were saying. When you miss that many chances, you kind of feel, don't you? Oh, they're gonna get a fucking set piece or a counter attack. We've yeah. been in that situation like loads of times where we're worried about that, and then and that's exactly what we did to them, and it just knocks the stuff out of you. And Arsenal were never coming back after that. No, the, the it's the self belief thing, isn't it? We've we've got it in spades again, yeah. and Arsenal have currently like they're running on empty. They don't believe. The more chances you you miss, the the belief level goes down, and then you can see the goal. They 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 the opposition hasn't even scored. You've it's an own goal, and then yeah, your belief levels are on the floor. So I did think that maybe they'd nick one um, from a set piece, especially when Darwin gave away that really stupid free kick late on, but. Yeah. I, I also thought we could get a second, and and so proved. And again, it was like a bit of a messy breakaway. It wasn't it wasn't very slick. There were like three players running very close to each other, so the chances of cla- uh, crashing into each other were high. But good ball out to Diaz, and again, I thought it was a very Marnie esque finish, like a dart in the top yeah. corner, exactly yeah, where Ramsdale couldn't get it. And again, it just hopefully a, a, a mark of his resurgency because be great to see if, especially with Mo away if, if we can get Diaz firing there it might, it might be a problem if he's firing on the right hand side and Mo yeah. comes back we might have to then revert him back to the left and worry if he's going to be as good there but no it's uh, again I thought he had a very good game Diaz I thought um, one of his better ones we had that other we, one that, that other chance which similar to what you just said there about like the counter attack and it looked a little bit oh that's a little bit tight Is that good? When, when Jota played the little ball to Diaz I thought he'd underplayed the pass but Diaz got there first, got his shot away, and it's it's a great mm. save by Ramsdale. To be fair, like, but I I also um I also want to go on Nunez watch that uh, Jota hit the bar from um from a great yeah. leap from him. He's a great he's a great header for for a fairly small. See how fat, high up uh, in the guy. air he was when he won that. Yeah, it was tremendous. Well. But then Darwin missed. I thought he should have been least hitting the target there. He looked yeah. like he approached it with no, I think I said to the chat with. With an open face club, yeah. club uh, sand wedge there. Yeah. <laughs> it just, yeah. It just Do you know what? I just, I, I, I think I, I just had a little epiphany about Darwin during, while the match was on. So I've kind of changed my mindset about Darwin altogether, really. And that now I'm just accepting that we've got what we've got. He definitely causes trouble. He definitely gives opponents things to think about. You know, this stuff, I'm not even going to go over it now because we've talked about it on the pod loads of times. And I'm just saying now, any end, any end product that comes as a bonus. But I certainly think he's for, for the mayhem that he causes, he's worth his, he's worth his place in the team. And I think, you know, if we weren't so blessed with attacking riches, maybe we wouldn't be able to say that. But we are, and so I think it's now, you know, just we'll we'll see what comes. I still think he could click. Things will click. Kick. On. But I've stopped expecting it or even hoping for it. Really, I'm just accepting that we've got what we've got at the moment, and let's see what comes of it. But he certainly creates problems for opponents. Um, there's times when you just think, oh fucking hell! There was a couple of moments like that today, you know. That, you know that I thought he should have hit the target when, when he went up for the header, and also the one Jules just mentioned. But you know, when when we're beating, when we're going away to Arsenal in that situation, when we're down to the bare bones and we come away two 0 and he played his part, be, he did loads. Yeah, of he did exactly. That's well. that's that's my point, Dave. That's yeah. my point. You know, and I think yeah, he's it, dying away. So, just to know if he's going to yeah, blow up yeah. on you or the opposition. <laughs> Absolutely. In some ways, it's it's a little bit like the trend thing I was talking about before. I've, you know, you you can. I've, it's easy to focus on the shit. Yeah. But like, I'd rather just focus on what he's doing well, and then Paul, hopefully, the, they, they, I'm sure 
you might have seen this film. There's no way Dave seen it. It was uh, Dave seen this film, the the William Friedkin film Sorcerer, which is a yeah, remake of The Wages. The yeah, that that the, I have Darwin's seen it, the you bastard. You've seen Sorcerer? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way on earth you've seen it. Um, they've got a, they've got to transport like unstable nitroglycerin through the jungles of South America. Okay. Uh, that's Darwin. <laughs> Darwin yeah. that. You just don't know yeah. if he's going to blow up or not, and if it's going to be in your favour, if he'll get you to the end. He's definitely dynamite, as I say. You just don't know if he's going to take you out of the opposition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I, I thought he. I, I'm, I'm, again, I'm, it's always a little tongue in cheek. That was a terrible miss, but I, I did think he second half especially. I, I, I didn't think maybe if Verge was playing as Paul said, we would have got a little bit more out of him by you know. Get it, get him to stretch his legs a bit, but I, I thought he, he played his part in, in stretching the game and giving us chances in the second half. Definitely. And again on the left, I think he looks absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah. And I would just say the, that fucking score though, Darwin. Yeah, that sake. that chance. What you were talking about when he came back off the bar, it's it's bad. It's a bad miss. The only thing in mitigation is when you look at it from behind the goal, he's he's got to try to put it in the top corner because there's no other gap there, and. He's just blue into it, basically. You know, he's got to he's got to be closer than that. It wasn't close. It wasn't a good effort at all. But it's not like he had like options. Like you've got to go for that top corner, and yet he just fucked it up. But that other one when he cut inside and and like leathered it, there's not a good angle of it from behind the goal. It looks to me like it, it it's like the angle of post and bar. It just grazed off it because like his reaction was like, oh, that must have been really close. Oh, further away than that. You couldn't really see with that angle from from behind the goal. It looks like it just glances across. The only thing oh, that I makes me think it didn't is, is the net doesn't flutter. You know, with like the vibration. Mm. But um, I thought it was a foot away. I just think people are, are focusing far too much on what he's not doing and not really concentrating on the things that he is doing and the yeah thing is, it's because of how much money the, he cost he was supposed to be it, like the clinical it's not the money dave that, but if he was not. a goalkeeper and the goalkeeper wasn't doing the thing he's meant to be doing which is saving goals well, saving shots but he what no 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 but if, if a goalkeeper was not doing the thing he's meant to be doing focusing too much on the thing he's not doing saving shots but he was really good like edison with his feet ah that's, that's you'd still that's be going an, that's an apples to oranges comparison there. Mm. That Okay. Dave, the point you're making is kind of what I'm saying is that I, I've just my mindset has changed, and I think I think it would be helpful to, to, if lots of Reds try to do the same because we're not relying on him for goals. We're top of the league, you know, exactly. And we're still in we're, all we're, the competitions. We're beating teams. He it's hasn't not like scored he's, in what he's killing he's us. Got one in fifteen games, but he's still he's still causing problems to opponents in games. And I think I just want to put that in the box marked. That'll be sorted in time. That'll, that'll just the, the things will start to come better in time there. I do wonder if this situation that we're in now, you know, Mo away, um, Jota being the only one who really looks like he's guaranteed to score um, in terms of his ability to take chances. Diaz coming across to the right being the only really viable option on the right, and therefore Darwin on the left. I wonder if that just gives us a little setup that might do him do him a bit of good because I just from think, think Jill said. A, Definitely away from home. Yeah, yeah, I think Jules said it just before. I think he does look, probably looks his, at his best on the left, I think, currently. Um, and I just wonder if a little run of games like that might just be what he needs. But I, 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 like I said, I've given up worrying about it. Just come in, have an impact, press like Klopp wants you to do, create problems for opposing teams, and other people will get the goals, and that's fine. One thing I would say, with in all sincerity, is... I haven't talked about Arsenal striking problems. I would much rather have him than not have him, and have and have what Arsenal have at the moment. Oh, definitely. So yeah, he's not, he's, yeah definitely. he's not like he's not scoring at the moment, and it is a tiny bit of a concern. Although he did score against that that nice goal at Burnley, it is a little bit of a concern. But he he has got it in him to score goals. Um, yeah. And Arsenal don't seem to have anyone who has that. Like I say, Jesus is not the answer. Never has been the answer. It he only was, you know, decent at Manchester City because they were in there get to the byline and pull it back phase, and he was getting like Sterling was getting quite yeah. a few goals out of that. So I'd still rather have him right now for squad depth, if nothing else, than not have him. And you know, I'm slightly concerned that we're still in all four competitions because I remember two years ago. <laughs> I'm, my memory's not that bad, and. The squad isn't that large, and I don't want to. I, I still want the league over everything. I don't want us to burn out by being too good, <laughs> which is a funny yeah. thing to say. 
because we still only lost what one lead, one game domestically all season. With a big yeah. asterisk next to it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Now that that is that is a concern, but then the flip side of that is, um, it's what like I think it was Linda said in a press conference earlier in the season that Jota had said to him the best thing that happened to us that season was going so far in the cups. Because it, it it kept everybody involved and like we had a momentum going, and it's much better to have that than to be like Arsenal today, like they're out in the third round. So and this is a much younger there's squad. There's two ways well. of looking at it. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's a squad favorable draws would be nice, house. wouldn't it? You know, where we can play some of the younger players in the cup. Definitely. We don't want like a, a fucking good Premier League side away from home, where we've got to play a strong team. Ideally, we yeah. want to be able to give a few of the kids a chance in the next round. So yeah. that will that would definitely be helpful. And also, like, a nice big win in the first leg over Fulham would be helpful as well for rotating Definitely. in the second leg. But, oh, yeah. lo- lovely segue, Dave. You get Look at you. You're getting this posted down seamlessly. Now. Beautiful. <laughs> that, that, that was just pure coincidence. You're talking uh, like I've got like, some, the magic. a schedule written down. Like, well, right, we'll get to this next. No, I thought... I, no, I, you know, game, a schedule. Game. I just thought it was tremendous ad-libbing, but uh, you've <laughs> shit on it now, so yeah, never mind. Yeah, it was, it was pure luck. No. Um, so while we're there, what what do we do Wednesday? What do we do team wise? I say we go more or less I, what we did full today. Strength. We, haven't future, got a, we haven't got it. We haven't got it. Virgil comes same. back. Semi final. We haven't it? got a game after it. So realistically, Dave's right to try and put it to bed. Yeah. As much as you can, get some goals, um, and then hopefully sort itself out. Right. Yeah. We don't do things the easy way, though, do we? And no, no. no. It depends if like good Fulham or shit Fulham turn up. If it's well, good if Fulham, Fulham, we played we've, a few we've about a month ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, true. So I think I'd go more or less what we did today. But Verge comes back. Do you has going to play? Uh, though, yeah. yeah, it is. It is competition, isn't it? So I think they've already told them yeah. that he plays. Yeah. So yeah, so Kelleher comes back yeah. in. Virgil comes back in. Um, I don't think they'll play Owen back. I think he'll be on the bench and he'll probably get on. So I think it'll be Gomez again, left back, Trent, midfield, McAllister. Who, who plays with who plays with Virgil? Canate or Kwanzaa? I think can oh well, yeah. Canate. I'm just mindful of the fact that Canate's had some little muscle things. Yeah, it depends people, on he? if they if they want to be careful with him then you play. Joe Kwanzaa. Gomez. And Bradley right back. Mm. Yeah, I'd be I'd be fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. So hang yeah. on. What is Sorry, Joe Gomez no. plays? No, I'm, because Gomez is playing play, left back. Yeah. He plays left back. Have we got? Have we got another left back? Yeah, Owen back. Owen back. Is he now? Is he now out of his suspension? Yeah, it was yeah. one game. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, so I think back at left back. Man, you know, well, he'll maybe, definitely be in the, know. He'll definitely be in the squad. Yeah, it depends on Canate. If they think he's fine to play the the two games, then you pick him. But. That's not what they've been doing, is it? They've been very careful with them, so yeah. Yeah. Rightfully so. And again, I, I, it is it, it's tempting with the break after it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Also, I want to um, say Gravenberg made an impression today when he came on. I thought he helped. Just get. Yeah, his I was foot concerned. And... I was concerned about him uh, when he came on because I don't think he's done well recently. And and his first first couple of contributions were a bit. You know, it took him a minute to find the pace of the game. But after that, I thought he was fine, yeah. and I would say he got be us thinking up the about. Pitch. He did, yeah. I'd be thinking about starting him on on Wednesday. Yeah, um, and I think I don't. I just want to play Curtis every game, but I don't know that we just need to be careful of Curtis as well, given the fitness issues he's had. Mm. Um, so who goes? Would you go Mac at number six? In yeah. the six, I don't think we've got much choice really, unless you're playing play Trent there. Then you've. I think you've got to play Maka there. Plus, he didn't play the full game today, so yeah, should be fine. So, Maka six. They seem to be treating Harvey with kid gloves, don't they? I wonder if it's just the fact that his age, because he's so young, they're trying not to put too many miles on the clock with him. Yeah, maybe. I wonder if, I wonder if, if, I wonder if it's a game that he should start, though. Gravenberch and Harvey ahead of... Um, Jules. Ahead of... Players against the former yeah. clubs. Maka. Former team, I was just about to say, it's a risk. <laughs> it's a risk, especially... Yeah, if but didn't who do home. get... Didn't that hoodoo get uh, get broken? When did that happen recently and it, and it worked? My man's gone blank. That's we should be all right just... playing him at Danfield, but the, in the in the away game, in t- uh, the return leg, no, don't play him. Risky away from home. He'd be, he should be all right at home. Yeah. So, and a, a, a former player away from home is his former club? No. 
leave him on the bench. So he, he and then front three, like Darwin, so. Jota, Diaz. Is it, are we all going for that? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah, I'm so more comfortable with Darwin playing on the start. left in away games. I feel like at Anfield, I'd still want to play him through the middle, but away from home, because you, you, you do get a little bit more space, you know, counter attacks and stuff. And I like him out on the left. Uh, I always remember like Tottenham away last season, he played on the left and he looked really good. So games like that, no problem with him playing on the left at Anfield. I think I still want him through the middle. But on Wednesday, the fact that we've got needs no one must, really to the yeah, right and we yeah. need Jota in there, yeah, 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 they probably would Indeed. do that. Yeah, I mean Jota's is definitely going to start the game, no question about that. So yeah. it's like it's three from four, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So Gakpo missing out for me. Same. Yeah, Gakpo missing out for me. Yeah. And score predictions. What what's what's their recent form like? They've they've dropped off a bit, haven't they, from when they were like putting loads past people? No, it's up and down. Well, they beat Arsenal two weeks ago. Yeah, the um, yeah, but they had a couple of five nils after they they scored three at Anfield. Yeah, and then they lost three nil at Newcastle, but they had um, Jimenez got sent off when it, I think it was like one nil or nil nil at the time. Uh, yeah, so you can kind of write that one off, and then they've just been sort of a bit up and down, like, but it just depends. They beat. It's like um, they beat Rotherham on Friday night. So they've had a little bit of extra time off as well. They probably yeah. rested a few for that as well. I would have thought. Yeah. We're starting to look really, uh, really, really tight, aren't we? In terms of clean sheets and defence, and I think that's sort of that's still, you know, we didn't concede today. And <laughs> I know, but come on. <laughs> well, I know, I know, but we we did come under pressure, didn't we? I know they were they were ridiculous, yeah. but we did come under pressure. Uh, I I think uh, I think uh, I think three nil three nil Wednesday. I don't necessarily think we'll put loads past them, but I think it's the clean sheet. I think it'd be quite a convincing, um, com- yeah, a convincing, a convincing win without uh, without exerting ourselves too much. Three 0 I'd be delighted with that, but I feel like we'll make hard work of it, and it'll still be a last two, one. the second leg. Two one. Yeah, yeah, two one. I think that'll be a disappointment at Anfield. Two one. I think we. Uh, we're better than that, and we're, we're much better. They were very good at Anfield, is what I'm concerned yeah, about. They were excellent. Yeah. I mean, we needed to yeah. score like three absolute worldies, and then a, it was a good goal from Trent as well to beat them. You know, they, they played really well. They're, they're a well coached team. You know, very well coached. You can see what you can see what they're doing when they play. You know, some teams like they're just a bit scruffy and that, but like there's a plan to what they do. You can see they're well coached, and they've got like good forward players not necessarily like prolific goal scorer but they've got loads of good players Harry Wilson Willie and you know, out wide like they've got quality there so um, yeah you've, you've got to play well to beat them so I'll, I'll take any win I'd like a nice big win so we can take the second leg a, a bit easy and rest a few players but it's just not what we normally do we always make like no. more difficult than, than need be don't we yeah absolutely so um, what are you two both saying 2-1 yeah, I'm saying 2 1. Yeah, 2 1. Yeah, I'll ask to me 3 0. And I'm, I'm not going to predict Darwin to be scoring goals this time because <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna change tack on that because every game, like, yeah, this is the game, this is the game, this is the game, and it never is. So, yeah, I'm saying nothing. I'll just I'll just <laughs> let it play out naturally. <laughs> the only thing I, I want to say on that is, you know, you said, Jules, about um, you're concerned about it. I'm not concerned yeah. about the, the lack of goals. I'm frustrated by it. Like I'm not concerned because concerned would mean that I feel like it's a long term problem and I don't. I do think it'll just sort itself out over time. But it is really frustrating. Especially because I'm having to deal with like people giving me shit constantly, like every time like he misses a chance, I'm like, oh no, I'm not even gonna look at me Twitter mentions or like That's because that's chatting. what happens when you go all in. I am all <laughs> you in. Go all in. I, 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 that's what I mean, you've gone all in and you that's what happens. People are gonna come for you. I make no apologies for it. I, I love it. I think Dave, if you were in his position and with that fitness, these these problems wouldn't occur. Mm. That's got to be frustrating. It, as that well. is like, the frustration. Is like I'm seeing and missing chances that I know I would yeah. put away, and that, that is yeah. the frustration. It's like I wish yeah. I could just transfer my finishing ability to Darwin, <laughs> oh, and there'd be no stopping him. There would be absolutely no stopping him. Oh dear, oh lord! But unfortunately, it can't. There's no that. stopping you. You fucking egomaniac. I'm not an egomaniac. It's just I was a great finisher. I'm not telling you that I was great at everything else. Well, give me a chance. I, I bury you. <laughs> That's why it's hard to comprehend when I'm I'm like seeing like 
not just Darwin, but you know when you see other strikers and you're like, what are you doing? That's like that's not even difficult to do that. But and you know what? You know when you watch like the inside training videos and they're yeah. doing finishing drills. Have you seen Darwin just like pinging shots into the yeah, top yeah, corner yeah. and that? This week. It's it's that so like yeah. I, it just it does me head and I'm like oh what, why can they and not just him but like I'm watching like what they're doing in these training matches and like the technique I'm like well I'm not seeing that when you get a chance in a match you know it's it's got to just be like mindset hasn't it but those um, yeah, yeah those okay. training videos like I, I really enjoy watching them they are good did you hear when um, when Darwin was like running clean through in one of those those matches. And, it, you know, like the little exercise drills where they got four goals and one of the coaches shouts a number and they have to run to that goal, whichever, like, number it is. And he was running towards one of the goals and someone shouted out to Bravka as he was, like, one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know who it was. I don't know who it was. But, yeah, someone just shouted to Bravka, but, like, he slotted that. I'm like, oh, why couldn't you have just done that the other night and oh, saved you get me the, all, all the shit that I get? Did you get onto them all singing the Super Mario music to, uh, to McAllister when he... <laughs> <laughs> he was lining up to take one. No, I didn't see that one. They're all, they're all basically calling him Super Mario. <laughs> oh, God. Doing the music off the game to him when he's, uh, when he's trying to ping one in. <laughs> no, and then but... Klopp. Did you see Klopp's skills when he was yeah. uh, when there was the little coaches warm-up? And then they all buzzing off the fact that it was caught on camera. Yeah. They were yeah. nice touches, them, though. Yeah, they were, yeah. Hey, yeah. Did, did you know Klopp lost his wedding ring after the Newcastle game? Oh, it's, it's somehow me and Paul like because you you left like after about an hour and ten minutes on the Newcastle part, didn't you? And somehow yeah. me and Paul managed to like drag it out to two hours fifteen minutes or something, <laughs> and we still didn't mention about Klopp losing his. Did we talk ring. about it before the before we started recording though? Because we normally do that. Don't I don't we? think so. No, you I lose think track. We, we both knew about it, but I don't think yeah. we'd mentioned it. And somehow we got through like over two hours on, on that Newcastle part, and we didn't mention that at the end. And I, I, I didn't know at the time that that's what had happened, but I knew something had happened because I seen him hugging the cameraman. And usually he's always like pissed off at the cameraman and like pushing him away because they get too close, you know. And sometimes he's like, he's not even done his fist bumps because, and then he's pointed at the cameraman and gone, it's his fault. I'm not doing it because he's ruined it for everyone. But then like the, the cameraman found his wedding ring. So I seen him hugging him. I'm like, what's that all about? And then we find out afterwards what has happened. But he yeah. said as well, didn't he? He's not going to uh, get the, get a cob on with the cameraman anymore yeah. after that. He said uh, any yeah. like close up like facial shots he wants now, no problem. But yeah. Uh, yeah, we somehow managed to not mention that, like despite talking for like well over two hours on the game. Just well, bizarre. Well, there you are, balance redressed. We probably missed something today as well, you know, and. And I'll be like, oh, I'll be in the chat later. Oh, fucking hell, boys, we forgot to say that. <laughs> so think now, before we go off, is there anything else that we've missed? Oh, as if you and me are going to remember anything like that. If, if Jules doesn't remember it, it's on Jules if we've missed something, because he's the only one young enough to remember that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, it's on you, Jules. If we've missed something, this is your fault. Last week, fair <laughs> enough, because you weren't here. It's on me and Paul, but if we missed anything. Yeah. No, I don't think so. We caught, we, we've got most of the key things. Like, there might, there might be a... There was no penalty incidents. There was no, as you say, VAR didn't intervene in anything. There was nothing. The referee let the game flow. Mm. We covered Arsenal's profligacy. Can't say it. Wastefulness in front of goal. Darwinness <laughs> in covered, front of goal. <laughs> we've we've had we've had we've had Darwin watch. We've had, we've covered Trent. We've uh, we've covered the young lads coming on. Uh, Diaz. No, I think I think that's comprehensive. Can't wait for for us to find out what we missed. What was the uh, what was the game like? Um... I watched the game and oh, it must have been Sunderland and Newcastle yesterday. There was there was no VAR. And yeah, because it's it's only a Premier League grounds. Which I gotta be honest, you shouldn't have them. That's an imbalanced competition. How's yeah, that a competition? Yeah, fucking ridiculous. If it's not for Weird. everyone, then it shouldn't be for anyone. Yeah, that that's meant. That was all football's rules were ever meant to be. That you could play it on the park, or you could play it at the professional level, yeah. and it's all the same. And yeah. it's not the same. Yeah. VAR is the reason, but in the same competition. The luck of the draw determines whether it's in yeah. play or not. Nah, not for me, though. No, it's Get not right. it in this. But it's just yeah. so much more enjoyable without it. Yeah, yeah, it is, absolutely. Even, like, you know, it, there was a game we had recently. What was the, what was the recent match we had? Was It might have been West Ham in the Cup, was it, in the, in the League Cup? It was, yeah, it yeah, was. It was. There was no yeah. And 
it's just so much more enjoyable. Like even yeah. when they're getting stuff goals wrong, goals. it happens so quick. It's like there's a penalty incident, and the ref makes a decision there and then, and then the game just goes on. And yet he might have got it wrong, and we can talk about it afterwards. But most of the time, with penalty decisions, they're all subjective anyway. And even if like VAR mm. does get involved. Not everyone's going to agree either way, but at least you're not having to deal with all like the stoppages and waiting around. It just needs to go. Just fuck it Have off. we got VAR on Wednesday? Did I read some of the... It does exist in the semis and the final? Yeah, mm. I read that as well. That's fucking shit, isn't it? What, I mean, the same what, point yeah. Jules has just made. Is it's that... the same point Jules just made about the FA Cup. It's ridiculous. Like, I don't even get why that would be, because initially I thought, well, is that just because it's only Premier League teams left in? But it's not, because Middlesbrough's in it. Middlesbrough are playing in the other semi, aren't they? So it, it can't be yeah, anything exactly. to do with that. Why no, would you not have it against West Ham in the quarters, but now it's it's there against Fulham? Because if you do have to put it into a football league ground, there's more, there's less chance of it happening, and there's less of them than there would be at a quarter final. I can only think it's that. I know. But... Anyway, there, there was no VAR tonight. Let's not talk about it. Yeah. There was no VAR. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and the fact that there was not it wasn't involved at all, it just makes the game so much more enjoyable. It flows yeah. so much better. So yeah, fuck it off. Oh, I know what we need to I know what we need to just do for a minute is just laugh at how fucking pathetic Newcastle were in the way they celebrated that win. Oh my god. Yeah, but did you see what, what the reason for that was? The nearly exploded. So did mine and then taking it, uh, fucking photos. Jason fucking Tyndall that's, getting them all. That's down. when it all made sense, when it was that fucking Jesus beaut. Christ. God. They should be right. I get that it's a. I get that it's a big, a big derby. They've not played them for ages. But fucking hell, they played a championship club in the fucking third round of the FA Cup, and they were acting like they'd won the fucking European Cup yeah. at the end of the game. A it's championship so, club that's basically so bad. A, a team full of kids as well. Like Sunderland's like average age they is twenty, and then you've got like all these like sixty million pound players on the pitch, and you're taking fucking selfies on the. Where's pitch. the fucking dignity? They haven't gotten on that. That went like. A and the fans as well. On. The fans who fucking the fans are reveling and all that there, but by the same token, they've all been they've all been shouting the odds about you know in this shit run they've been on in the league, starting to say these players that they've worshipped for the last year or so are not good enough, and that Eddie Howe's Eddie Howe's coming under pressure. I mean, you know, fuck Beheady. But it's not about that. It's about the way the fans are so fucking fickle. You know, they're kind of thinking that these players aren't good enough for the league and they're starting to question everything the club are doing. And then they get a fucking win in the third round against the shit Sunderland. And they're acting like, they're, honestly, they're acting like they've just they've just beaten fucking Real Madrid in the European Cup final. They've been they're sports washed, though, haven't they? Did you see that, like, before the game and they were getting, like, scarves and breakfasts and everything Found all paid house, for yeah. by the club? Yeah. Sports yeah. washing in full effect. Fucking pretty. Yeah. All right, we're done. <laughs> Not a great way to end it, but <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, we'll be back on Wednesday night, I suppose. Uh, possibly Thursday morning, just depends how, how late it is. Um, after the Fulham game. Yeah, so thanks for listening and we'll catch you soon. The best word I can say, but uh, we'll describe this was boom. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what was this? It was really good.